Mic check, mic check. We good? I can't hear me. Can you hear me, John? I, I, you can hear me out there? You can, Andre, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for joining us, joining us for another, another day on the Village Talk Show. We are back in the studio after Andre decided he wanted to do a couple weeks hiatus. So um, uh, we're, we're good in there. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining, sharing, being part of the village right here on 92.1 GD radio on your FM dial. Me neither. Um, on your FM dial. Oh, there we go. There we go. I got it. Um, you, you can, you should be able to hear it. Yeah, I hear nothing. Yeah, I can still, I can hear you though. Oh, wait, you know what? Is it plugged in? Is John plugged in? Yeah. Look if John is plugged in. Yeah, John is plugged in. I don't know why you can't hear John. Yeah, hear John, you need to go see what what do you call it? The ENT? In the central? So thank you for joining us right here on the Village Talk Show. You can catch us on Facebook. Uh John Sampson, Roderick F. Daly, Andre Doman, Sophia Willisy, Johan um Brian. That's J-O-H-A-N-E. Uh Bryant with a T at the end. B R Y A N T. Um, you could also meet us at uh, uh, YouTube, which is where we want all of you to start going. Like, so we want you to 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 like, subscribe um, to our page on YouTube, the Village Talk Show, to hear about what's going on, current event, education, where we are dedicated to empower the community, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, dedicated to empower the community to live a healthy, safe, and financially capable life through education. Helping each one of us in realizing our dreams at any age, at any point. They want to know how the hell the guy who smeared feces on that woman is out of jail. Right. You know why? I am, I, you know, you know um, John... Thank I mean, you. I, I, I think we're going to start off that way. I, I, I agree with you. Cut this crap. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, can I do my scripture verse though first, man? Oh, no, no. Scripture yeah, always. scripture first. Whatever we do, villagers. God comes first, God though. God comes first. God right? Comes yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, all right. So, Andre, I don't see my Bible verse here. What's going on? I don't see it right here. What's going on? Yeah, you don't, you know, don't, don't let me, don't let me beat you down now. Um, all right, so, so let me just read you the Bible verse and thank you, Sister Jeanette Dawson, for you sending in um, our Bible verse this week. I know I, I got a couple in there 
but um, I'm reading yours to, from the uh, the the new international version. The new international version. Um, um, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Again, hear that. The testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lack wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without fault, and it will be given to him. So, Basically, uh, very easily put, pray, be steadfast, believe in the work of God that it will never change. So don't perseverance essentially is how are you praying? How, what is your steadfastness that you're doing? Um, and you, you, it's, it's not just fair weather, fair weather praying. It's long term. It's caring, Right. Um, it's having faith, doing what it is that you need to do. So God is always with you. God is always there to protect you and guide you and know that you need to persevere. And that perseverance comes through hard work, prayer. And remember, God doesn't answer on your time. He answers on his. So just make sure you take that word. And, and I'm sorry. The, the word was taken from James 1, verses 2 through 5. And again, thank you, Sister Janet Dawson, for those words. Yeah, John. Um, I don't know if I want to go from the Bible to to what happened well, at the know, subway. Well, well, uh, if you look at the Bible, uh -huh. and the Bible talks about the times, the dark times that we will face. And some people consider... Uh, these are dark times here in, in, in the city, uh, especially in the last year before uh, the current mayor Adams is in office and the level of crime. How about the last eight years, dog? Well, <laughs> the level of crime has increased exponentially. And as a result, a lot of people are, are fearful of riding the subways and just fearful even staying out in late or even coming into the city. And, and it's really impacting our tourism. So, you know, Hopefully, with uh, Mayor Adams, he has uh, implemented the, the uh, <coughs> anti-crime unit back, but it will be more visible in our communities to really, and also he, uh, uh, him and uh, Governor Hochul put together a task force to deal with those individuals, those homeless individuals who are in the subways to just um, give a sense of security, once safety and security, once again, to the uh, transit, the, 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 our um, fellow transit riders. But when you hear stories about a man who smears fe his own feces on another uh, individual in the subway station, he's, he is then arrested and he's out. Situations like this, which are so incredible, you know, just gives a sense of hopelessness to those individuals in our cities who are law-abiding citizens. So what the hell is going on, Roger? You know, you know, John, I I I I I think it's, it's you and your liberal friend. No, no, it ain't my Gail friends. Reborn. It ain't it ain't my friends. They're not my friends because I'm really pissed off about it. I think I think to 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 say let me go back. I want some of these left people to have feces. And uh, for those people who are listening, feces is the things that goes through the dairy air, right? So to have a bag of feces walking around, I want them to throw it on you. And then you tell me when they throw it on you that it's only a misdemeanor that you, do, you don't need to spend the time in jail. Can you believe that? The man was 43, right? 43 times right that he was out on bail and then cause all these things are misdemeanor 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 and to know 
that how could you throw i mean you could throw human body i don't even care if it's human i don't care what kind of body waste is on some, can you and then you're gonna tell me oh the person deserves a bail and 43 times is a menace and I, and I think that's what it is individuals can be we don't hear you john you don't hear me Sam. yeah that's what i was saying i was still i was i don't know why you don't hear me because you cut me down again huh yeah yeah, it, it, it's 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 low, very low. Yeah, you need to use your use your uh, use your inside voice. <laughs> you need to increase the volume on his mic. Now his, his his volume is there. I don't know what's going on with John today. Did you switch it off, Roger? No, I didn't. He's here. His mic is here. Say it, say it again, John. Okay. Can yeah. anybody hear me? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, can can you hear me? Yeah, loud well, loud. let me tell you. What the hell is going on when an individual can smear th- feces on another individual in the train station and be given and be allowed to to walk the streets again? Obviously, he's been what 43 times or he's he's a menace. Yeah. And what do we do with menace? We continue to allow them out, allow them out. Continue to to menace, mm-hmm. continue to aggravate. Not only aggravate, but the next thing you know, it may it, it, it may not be a bag of waste. It might be something else. It might be some kind of poison or something like that, some cyanide or whatever it is. You, you never know. Poison in your face, and you don't know if the lady's mouth was open or. Something. You don't know. There's so many things, but for people, this well, is ex- this this is why it is like the OK Corral here. You know, it's the revolving door. You go in, you go out, you go in, you go out, you go in, you go out. And, 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 when, and when the mayor Rikers when the mayor stuff. says, you know, let's look at bail reform. You know what? Maybe bail reform doesn't have anything to do with it. But yeah. you have to give certain discretion to judges, to, to those individuals who are dangerous or do dangerous acts. Although they may, although they may be Mr. Yeah. Minas. But if they repeatedly do incidents as such, there's a level of there's something more than there's a there's a psyche there's a psychological issue that 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 may arise and something needs to be done you know what I'm saying evaluation spend a little bit more time looking at this individual because the whole point is if he goes out there and next thing you know he commits he pushes someone on the train tracks and they die you know this is repetitive behavior that individuals, repetitive behavior that is really heightening the level of criminal activity in our communities. And as a result of that, people do not want to ride the trains. People are fearful. I was listening to the news today and they were talking to someone over there on um, Cotillia Road at the train station. And people are, people are, are, are literally afraid to ride the subway. If you got to worry about if, if you ain't got to worry about somebody pushing you on the tracks, you got to worry about somebody smearing shit in your face. You know, I mean, it's just it's un, it's unbelievable. I don't want my loved ones riding the subway. You know, would um, you? What about you, Doc? What you think? I don't Doc? do it. I don't do it at all. Um, mm-hmm. If I have to go to the city, I'll drive to the city, but I won't do it. I, I, you know, Doc ain't finished, man. Let Doc finish, man. Go ahead, Doc. <laughs> So no, I I agree with you. I'm not doing it. My sister, myself, and my kids, we all vow not to ride public transportation. That is a done deal. In regards to that, we're done. We're not doing a train. Yeah. But that's why MTA now is offering all type of incentive. The other day I was listening to the news. Um, there, if you take 12 rides, they'll give a discount. Um, the Omni, they'll give a discount for you to ride on the train. And the lady said, well, no one want to ride on the train because of the safety. They kept blaming it on COVID, but it's not COVID. It's safety. The lack of safety. You get on, you, you know, you get stabbed like yesterday, two people fighting. You get pushed, you get feces on your face. What else? Homeless people fighting you. You know, you get robbed. What else? You know, all the great Things that you want to look forward to, going to the train station, taking the train. But, but, but wait. the good book says, "Fear no evil." <laughs> Don't even go there. No, we'll fight. You and I will fight in the studio. <laughs> Fear no evil. Um, 
No, there are a couple <laughs> of things I want to say, right? One, right? Um, now, I think I, we made it too loud now, all right? So the, the first thing is the, the media, right? The media, what part does the media play in the fear mongering? Oh, they hype things up. Right. Of course. Because the reality the, the, the reality of the situation, right? This is the reality of the situation. New York City has approximately 10 million people. Mm -hmm. Right? There have been 32 incidents on the subway since January. We're now in March. How we are speaking about it right now make it seem like it's normalcy for this behavior is actually pretty safe. If you have um, more than a million people a day taking the subway system and 32 major incidents since January, you have 32 major incidents in your house before since January. Do you ride the train? It, it, that's irrelevant. That's <laughs> irrelevant whether or not I ride the train. I do ride the train. I haven't ridden it in a while. Mm. Right. But I rode the train for a very long time. So the, the point that I'm making is that the media portrays on heighten on people's fear. Right. Because, again, let me say it one more time. Over a million people ride the subway every day. And since January, there are only 32 incidents I'm not excusing it because if it happened to you, once any incident happened to you, it's bad. But it's only 32. So when I hear Dr. Bryant go, I'm not taking my family's not taking the subway, my family's not this. No, I'm, I'm not saying yes or no. It does play into what the media is saying. Roger, it's like anything else. Sensationalism. You know, yeah, the, media, exactly. the media is going to prey upon that. If you look at the incidents and the number of people that take the trains, of course. But then you look at the incidents at this period of time last year, the year before that. What I'm saying is these incidents are uh, these incidents are, are, are becoming a little bit more um, more, more, more violent, uh, more, think, more, more yeah, not, yeah. violent, threatening. I mean, you have to literally. Uh, be concerned about you it has to be in back of your mind when I get on the subway I can't get too close to the edge of the subway because I don't know yeah, who's true. around me I may mm -hmm. have to look I have to I have to also I don't know if I see homeless people but again these individuals who are homeless we don't know for whatever reason so we should not look shun or look down upon because they're before the grace of God you go at the same time it just brings the heightened level that we need to have as riders on our subway systems that these individuals they need safety too. They need to. They need security. They need certain things that have not been provided to them for for years, for days, for weeks, whatever. It's for decades. But I I think the 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 bottom line in, in, in all of this is that of course we know that the media is going to heighten things up, but that level increases the writer's insights and and vision. To look out for certain things when they're or riding should, the subway, should, yeah. it, 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 to be alert. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You you have you have to be alert when you're riding the subway because there, in comparison to the number of people ride it, as a number of incidents, it's, 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 it's minuscule. But at the same time, that one incident can have a profound impact not only on that individual but for his family and everybody else. So what we need to do is, as as the mayor has done more police officers in the subway systems, but at the same time, we have to practice certain precautionary measures that we have to take so we don't engage, we, we won't engage or we won't fall prey to those who are prey upon us in that subway system. So I, I guess two points, um, two points I want to make, right? One, if you have people like Dr. Bryant, right? who's like, I'm not taking the subway. I'm not doing that. And now they see this, right? So now they're heightened, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're heightened. Oh, this is why I don't take the subway. Right. Right. So it, it kind of justify why when there was no reason before. Well, when I didn't take the subway before. That's what I'm saying. So now, just, no, wait, wait. That's exactly what I'm saying, though, right? I'm saying that this is now justified. Right. This is right. Exa that is exactly what I'm saying. Is 100% what I'm saying that seeing things like these is saying that is why I don't do the subway, which in, in actuality, you didn't take the subway anyway. Mm -mm. 
right? So having this incident or not, it's not going to make you take the subway. It's just going to say, this is why I'm not doing it. My biggest problem, though, is the court reforms. Because the persons who are committing a lot of these crimes are people that these liberal, overly liberal people have put back on the streets. They're the ones. They don't put them back on the streets. The judges put them back on the streets. The judges are there to interpret the laws. Right. But at the same time. But it's the liberal people create these laws that make it happen. Because it's the liberal people who they claim they're talking for the people who want these changes. Yeah. And they don't. And these people actually really don't want these changes. You have, what, these, what, you have, you have what, some who just have their own agenda. They they perceive that the people want uh, uh, this such liberalism when it comes to uh, the, the court systems. The court systems, of course, needs revamping. But you need to give the judges more discretion. But however, sometimes you have to be careful because these judges, they come with their own biases when they sit on the bench. Although they're supposed to be impartial, you know, I always tell everybody, lady, lady, liberty, late, what is it? The, the scales of justice and, you know, be balanced and she's blind. But there always seems when it comes, it always seems when it comes to people of color, that blindfold always has a hole in it. I you think know? I think there's a difference, right, between criminal reform and look at the, in the, the systemic biases that happen within the court system. Right. Being arrested 43 times and come back out and within days you throw feces on something that's not criminal reform or injustice. That's a lack. But of if justice. he meets the requirements of he's supposed to be entitled to bail, or because, if he meets no, the requirements they, they, that there's oh, no bail, if they, if they meet the requirements, that there's no bail. But however, in this instance, you should look at the magnitude of what he has done the number of incidents that have happened over the period of time, and you question or not whether this individual would fall under that. This is, we're talking about giving the courts more discretion in making that decision. That's the same thing as the Plaza case, where um, the gentleman had so many cases for having guns, and they release him for shootouts. They release him. and was on bail. They didn't release him. He he made bail. The 19-year-old, yeah. Still yet. When you release someone who has a criminal record of having so many different of the same offenses, what are we saying? It doesn't matter. What type of message do we send out? I agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that. Um, there's there's one thing that I wanted to say, and you know, then I want to change the subject to a little happier note for a minute, right? And that is in the DOE, right? You have escalation of problems to move the problem to the next level. So if you commit a certain amount of level one infractions, it can go to level two. Right. If you commit a certain amount of level two infractions, it goes to level three. Mm -hmm. Level three goes to level four and so forth. Mm -hmm. Right. It doesn't go past level four. So at which point are you going to say these many misdemeanors now become a felony? Mm -hmm. After after you've committed 10, 15 misdemeanors, then we're going to have to say, well, you know what? You're you're a menace. So now let's move from misdemeanor now over to felony because now we have a problem. Because clearly, me, we we giving your DA a disappearance ticket or a community service or you know whatever really doesn't. It's not doing anything for you. So let's 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 move it a little bit. Let's get a little more serious. Hmm. Um, uh, or or Orpheus said, John, that New York City has lost its appeal. Uh, its what's appeal. up, oh, hey? What's up, Orpheus? How you and doing, just, brother? Playing crazy now, right? Um, I know. I mean, I, I mean, you know, uh, Orpheus, uh, you, you you're correct, and I know your your, your brother's on the uh, is a member of the New York Police Force, and you know, some might characterize it as as as, as New York going wild, but in, in, if you put it in the context of the uh, the number of people that we have, but those incidents that do occur, they are magnified to the point where you know what it. it it takes over all the positives that New York City has to has to offer. And so it's like anything else. They, what, what are they, what, what's, what's the saying? You know, it takes it takes a lifetime to build a reputation, but you know, one incident can it just it just takes one incident to destroy that reputation you built. It's funny. I thought about that with uh, Sheldon Silver this week. That's what I thought about. Mm-hmm. Not not that ex- not that same expression, but I thought about right. all that he did. And then to see that he died in jail for, you know, whatever. 
Um, so, John, let me ask you a question. Um, and, and Dr. Bryant, on a different subject, right? Have you been getting a lot of phone calls about the summer? What are you doing with the kids? Yeah. Are you, are, have you thought about what you're doing to children for the summer? Um, yeah. I want my son. I want. What does yeah mean? You always it would be like you. you yes. So, what's yeah. the one word answer, dog? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I actually would love for both my kids to work, but um, my daughter won't be of age until closer towards the end. So you're gonna, you're gonna make your kids work, yo. Yeah, he needs some experience, some real life experience. Okay, so, so let me ask you a question. Go ahead. What experience do you get from some of youth employment? Responsibility for what? Up early. Responsibility for what? That's important. He wants his own cash. I have no problem with that. Are you going to provide cash for him? I don't think that some of youth employment programs should be used for that. Okay. I hundred percent disagree with that. Well, you know what? It it re it really requires kids to focus, to become responsible, to wake up on time. You understand? These are my my son wakes up on time, but for school. So now for work, understanding the importance of working. You know what happens when you give young people money? What is that? I, I've seen it happen, so especially young people of color. You start giving them a little money. What's that? They 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 start looking at the money and that they get in and think that's it's it's good money. I think you're wrong, Roger. I don't know. I just think you're. You know, I never did. Listen, yeah. I, I did some of you. I created my first one of the summer youth program. Money was good, and that's why I'm so well computer too. So value. Right. I I I I think money for young people, if you're in a situation of crisis, it's important because you have to help out. That I agree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buy stuff or go back to school, those kind of things. But I think for in I think the summers should be used to advance and, and have fun, be a kid. Yeah, no, hold, hold, hold. You can be a kid and make money too. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. You know, my kids, what, the kids want to make, the kids right make, now, their, make their own money so they can create exactly. their own fun. Nah, man, I want, you know what I want? I want my kids to be playing basketball, playing baseball. Well, they can my, do that too after right. they get home from work. Nah, man, they're going to be playing baseball, child, go to baseball camp. What? Actually, my children are more business focused. They want to set create up a business plan. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have that. They have their LLC. They want to push it more. So that's, that's okay. Good. That's 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 good. I think that's good. Pushing the LLC, creating a business. Young entrepreneur. How old is the oldest one? Well, I know the older, older one. I'm talking about the two. Well, the oldest one will be 16 June 1st. Yeah, uh, there's and a program, the right? There's a program called Inroads. Look into it. Okay. All right. I, Michelle wrote, I went to boarding school and I used summer youth money to pay for books. Oh, please, Michelle. What, All right, what? Michelle. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. Now, I, I, now it, it, you know, it, in, in seriousness, John, they're, they're, you know, let me be serious and not be facetious. I think some of youth employment does provide um, opportunities for, to help. one, it helps the family, especially when you live in, uh, you can't even afford gas nowadays. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think I saw something where I saw some place where gas was 439. No, downtown Brooklyn, boy, downtown Brooklyn on on Flatbush Avenue before Tillery at a gas station. Gas is almost five dollars a gallon. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so so that's important, right? Um, you can't pay rent no more in New York. Yo, somebody, uh, I, I I know somebody. I, I I'm looking at it. Somebody um is looking at rent for as my man said rent too damn high yeah what, what was his name yeah when he ran for actually he did well mm -hmm. um you see i i like michelle's um comment it, it was, was a requirement. requirement from because it re it required her to become responsible to become know you know that. yeah absolutely no I, it, it, it did require you yeah. to be responsible and wake up early in the morning go to your job get on the train or or get on the bus Go to work, man. It gives you it. It, 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 it gave me a sense of but pride. The, 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 the problem that I'm having, especially with, when I got my own money in my pocket. That's that's <laughs> the, the the problem that I'm having. It was with, only like two fifty an hour, but right? it, was, it was it was enough. Yeah, 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 show you age, right? But the problem I'm having with it is I find a lot of times a lot. One, we don't spend the money like we should. Okay. Right? We waste it. Oh, 
you know, now I could buy this because there's no real financial literacy that's going along. No, granted, it's maybe a thousand dollars. I don't know how much it is now. I mean, back in the days in the 70s and 80s, it was almost nothing, right? It was a couple of what, three, four hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. $200 a week. What's interesting is they're paying these kids the same amount as they would. What's minimum wage now? $15 an hour? I think 15 yeah. So it's a so lot of money. That's what they're starting the kids off with. Yeah, but the problem, again, you need to back that up with financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Just don't give them a job, but give them financial literacy so they know how to spend their money. For my kids, right, and for, you know, if you have younger people, not, not of that age, you know, you need to find activity. You need to find camps. You need to find, you know, whatever it needs to do. And Again, you're looking at low cost, right? So um, one of the things that my kids do, I have, uh, we have our special guest today is uh, Jerry, right? And uh, we're going to bring him on because he provides, his organization provides um, opportunities for young men and women for the summer. And actually, as a matter of fact, it's up to any age and they get opportunities to travel. Um, they get to go, you know, all around the United States, you know, and, and do something different. But like I said, if you're doing the summer youth, let's do some financial literacy along with it. So Jerry, uh, welcome to welcome again to to the Village Talk Show. The dreaded Bonnies. I used to hate. <laughs> the he said well, that. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me back, Jerry. Every time you say the Bonnies, he 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 gets mad. Right, you guys did a number on him when he was a kid. Yeah, man, we always had to go down to the damn parade grounds to play the Bonnies, or we had to leave you park to play the Bonnies. Yeah, you know. you know, I was actually at a meeting today, and one of the kids said, "Oh yeah, I play baseball." He says he plays for the Bonnies. All cool. right, that was kind of cool. I was in Staten Island. I was at a meeting. Um, so tell us a little bit who you are, uh, Jerry. Okay, well, uh, my name is Jerry Katsky, and I'm the um, uh, treasurer and athletic director of the Bonnie Youth Club. Um, the Bonnie Youth Club is in its uh, 73rd year of providing a academic, recreational, and athletic program for the youth of the community. Um, the organization was originally founded back in 1949 by Al Bonnie Sr. and his two sons, Al Jr. and Joe. Uh, Mr. Bonnie was a businessman in Flatbush. He had a moving and storage business on Church Avenue and New York Avenue. And he decided he wanted to do something to give back to the community. And what he did was he started a baseball program. And uh, we started with one team back in 1949, a, a college age team. And over the years, we've grown to 15 teams, 350 players, uh, ranging in age from four. Um, through 21. And although, you know, baseball has always been our primary activity, uh, we really view our mission as being much bigger than just baseball. We really view our business as our mission as using baseball and using sports to produce solid citizens of the community. And our approach is to uh, bring players into the organization at a young age. We start at age four. And over a period of years, not only develop their baseball skills, but their sense of sportsmanship and fair play, um, help them in terms of high school and college, in terms of both their athletics and their academics, and see them graduate from college and become uh, productive members of the community. You know, but, but you know, Jerry, you had a lot of ringers too, man. I remember playing the ball. No, no, no. Yeah, a lot of ringers, ringers too, you know. Yeah, a lot of ringers, man. <laughs> Listen, yeah, a lot they're, of they're ringers. Not ringers Joe. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Jerry, Jerry, that, um, Jerry, that sounds like a sore <laughs> loser right. to me, you know. Jerry, in your defense, they were not ringers. What they were were they were coached well by the coaches at the Bonnies, so that when they went to go play against John's team, who was under coach and not coach <laughs> at all, there right, you go. He felt like they were ringers, but just because the talent was that. Um, but the right, but right down there next to the Bonnies, we had the. Uh, I used to coach for um, the Brooklyn Skyhawks. Yeah. Right down there, parade grounds. Played there many, many years. Yeah. So that's for a lot, you know. But yeah, I'm a. I'm not a sore loser. Yes, you have ringers, man. That's all. You know, you, you know, one of one of again, you could tell. John is a little bit, he's still, uh, John, how long goes 40 years ago, man? Mm. 45, 50 years ago, you still, was about 50 years ago, John? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
you know, it's funny because I was I'm I, still, I'm still sour. You say, I'm still, still sour. sour. It's still sour. Still 50 sour. years later, it's still sour. Um, you know what? What's one of the things that people don't understand that there's a correlation between um, being active, being active in, 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 and you know, we always talk about after school activity, being an active. Tell us what number, what, what number of your students or your athletes actually went on to college? Well, we really pride ourselves in the fact that pretty much um, every one of our high school um, student athletes goes on to college. I think okay, you, you, I think you had a number so of uh, uh -huh. We currently have about 50 players um, in college right now, about half of them on academic or athletic scholarships. And we've graduated 150 players from college um, over the last 15 years. Nice. And, you know, many of them have gone on to be doctors and lawyers and teachers and engineers and policemen and firemen, you know, as well as professional baseball players. You know, I, I want to go back to some, sometime people hear these numbers and like, oh, that doesn't sound like a lot. Right. How many high school? Because now you say over the last few years, we have 150 players who went on to college. How many players? No, 150 that graduated from college. That graduated from college. The question that I have to ask is, I, I want people to really take a really big scope of what we're saying. How many players are on a team and how many high school level teams do you have? Sure. Well, in terms of players on the team, it varies from uh, one age group to another. But now I'm talking about the average high school, about I, I, I want to talk about high school on each yeah. team. How many? Uh, Sixteen on a high school level, and how many? Oh, no, high uh, high, right, high school level. That's correct. Uh, and what? What? How many teams do you have? Well, we have fifteen teams altogether. No, the no, ones no, no, that no, are no, actually no, high I'm school just, age. No, no, just high school age. I'm talking about. Yeah, so high school age, we have, I would say, um, uh, four or five teams. All right. So, yeah, so, and by the way, the, the age group of high school parents, if you're listening, right, is everybody's not a senior, right? So I, I want to make sure that people understand that everybody on that team is not a senior. So you might have four seniors, five seniors at most on, on a team. So now if you're playing baseball, right, and you have four or five people on a team every year, so you, maybe 15 total seniors. And if you're looking at, over the last 10 years, that means approximately every child is going to college, right? And 50% of those children are getting scholarships, partial or full. So let's let's talk about that again, parents. We, we all want our children to be better than us. And if you have almost 100% of the children participating in sports are actually going on to college, it's not something that you want for your own kid. So when, the, when you break down the number, oh, that doesn't sound like a lot. Let's break it down as properly as we can. I have about four to five students, and all of, almost all of them are going to college. Almost all of them are graduating from college. And like Jerry just told you, they're doing different professions, for, you know, that, that, you know, support. So it shows the value of being involved in academia, not just academia, but in recreation. I mean, now, how many of your um, participants' children are females? Um, not very many. I mean, baseball is a sport where um, the um, females can compete at the youngest ages. And we do have about, I would say right now, we have about five um, females in the organization who are at the younger ages. But once they get, um, I would say, above 12, it's pretty hard for females to compete. Uh, in baseball. Now we don't, we don't have a, some other organizations have softball programs mm -hmm. in parallel with their baseball programs. And there, obviously there are more females involved, but we focus primarily, we focus uh, pretty much a hundred percent on baseball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't tell Alina that by the way. <laughs> well, no, I was <laughs> actually going to say next uh, Rodney that um, Alina is an example. She's on our, um, She's currently on our nine-year-old team. And, you know, in my opinion, if she continues on the track that she's on, uh, she is going to be a high school baseball player. Yeah. Baseball and not softball. Oh, oh no. Correct. Alina's good. Alina's good. Alina's actually – Alina, she plays uh, actually with my son. And, uh, uh, you know, she, she pitches. Huh? She wins your son all the time, right? She wins, she wins my son. Yeah. 
she doesn't win my. She strikes him out all the time. Oh, so I mean. Can she strike him out? Yeah, she, she, well, she's not just striking him out. Yeah, she's um, <laughs> she's hitting, she's hitting. You know, I, I think back in the days where Tom Hanks had that movie with the girls don't cry. I, I forgot the name of the movie that he did when they, in the back in the fifties that a girls. Uh, women's uh, baseball league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what is a movie? There was a movie, uh, a league of their own. Um, a league of their own, right? Which was right. a real famous movie in terms of a uh, of a women's, you know, baseball team. Yeah. Hey, and- Jerry. Presently, how many? How many? Um, how many uh, of of those uh, ball players have actually made the major leagues? Okay, so we've had. Um, We've had about uh, we've had a lot of players that have played in the minor leagues. We probably had about fifty players that have played in the minor leagues. In terms of the majors, we've had about uh, five players that have played in the major leagues. Um, there are two players right now who are in the minor leagues who have a very good chance of being uh, big time players in the major leagues. You also have brothers, a- uh, one is Joshua Palacios. Mm-hmm. Um, he's currently with Toronto. He's probably going to be on the major league team this year. And his brother, Richard Palacios, um, is probably going to be in AAA, which is the next level down. Now, their uncle played for us, and he was a major leaguer. He played with um, um, Toronto and – I'm sorry, with the uh, with the Red Sox, and he also played with um, the Tigers. Um, you also have an ump, right, a famous umpire. Yeah, right? we also – I mean, our, our major claims to fame, you know, in terms of uh, – guys that have gone on to bigger and better things is uh, CB Buckner played with us and he's now just completed his uh, 23rd year as a major league umpire. Wow. wow. Um, Mark Tatum who originally started with us as a nine year old, uh, went to Brooklyn tech, uh, went to, um, went to Cornell, um, Harvard business school, and is now the deputy commissioner of the national basketball association. Hmm. So he's nice. the second in command to um, to Adam Silver. Um, Jared Banner also started with us in instructional league, and um, went on to um, uh, go to uh, uh, Amherst, and is now the uh, vice president of player development for the Chicago Cubs. And uh, Eric Delon, who is a uh, state assemblyman. Uh, played with us. Uh, played with us as well. I didn't know that. I knew that. Uh, you, you, uh, yeah, because you rubbed I knew it. That. He, why? Because you rubbed it in. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> John is mad right now. John is dead. Um. So, so, uh, let's talk about funding. Um. Sure. Uh, how do you? How does the bodies fund? Um. How do you fund? I mean, the, the baseball is a very expensive sport. And a lot of, okay. Yeah, a lot so of we're a uh, 501c3 organization. We're a nonprofit. Um, in all of our 72 years, we've never had a paid employee. Everyone's a volunteer. That's what's up. That's what's um, up. It costs us about um, $200,000 to uh, run the organization for a year. And we raise all of that money ourselves. Um, half of that money comes through uh, membership donations from the the participants and the other half comes from a variety of sources. We've been fortunate enough to get discretionary funding from the New York city council uh, for about the last 12 years. Um, we've also two out of the last five years, we've gotten funding from uh, major league baseball and the, and the uh, players association nice. under, they have nice. a program called the uh, uh, youth development foundation. Mm-hmm. Um and the rest of the money comes from, you know, sponsorships. Um, we get a lot of donations from our alumni. Um, we have an annual journal uh, that we do, and we run a variety of different uh, fundraising events. Uh, um, excellent. Um, you know, one of the things I I, I, I I try to put things into perspective from a financial level, it runs depending on what age level let's say over a lifetime over 10 years of baseball because you, you say you started four but you could start at, let's say you started six and you play till you're 17 so that's 12 seasons of baseball you spend 500 dollars per season mm-hmm. all right um i i, I doing in tennis five five thousand so 12 seasons six thousand dollars all right oh so you, you spend over six thousand dollars to do that 
And we, when we started the show, the reason why I'm, I'm going back to the funding and the, the, the cost is when you look at it, you spend $6,000 over 10 years and you get a, a full or partial scholarship. The child is dedicated, right? If the child is dedicated, you get a full partial scholarship. Now, I'm sure some of us who are paying tuition understand that $6,000 pales, right, John Swarthmore? Pales in comparison, right, to what we have now have to pay for tuition. So that's why it's it's a long term. And, and Joanne, you were talking about your children starting a business, but this is kind of like a long term investment into your child's future. That's if they're good. You understand? Not, I, no, actually, actually, let's good. So, so there, there, there are a number of ways to get good, right? One is natural ability. Mm -hmm. And the second one is hard work, right? Mm -hmm. So a child can become good if they're dedicated. Right, De dedication, determination, and desire; those three things together will eventually breed success. If they love it. If they don't love it, and and you're living vicariously through the child, then they're not going to put a hundred percent in. Y y yes, but at some point you're going to understand. I'm going to have to step aside. I'm just saying the investment is there. Mm -hmm. Right. At some point you might choose not to. Um, you we were talking so. You have summer camp as well, right? What what does that look like? Yeah, so we uh, well we run obviously our 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 baseball program is is basically year round, uh, but in addition to that, we also do run a camp through for the summer, which is run by Jose Castro, who's one of our managers. It's called Books and Baseball, mm. and he runs a uh, summer camp which is headquartered at the parade grounds, which is our home field. And also our clubhouse, which is around the corner from the parade grounds. And what he tries to do is focus on uh, working with the kids, you know, particularly the younger kids. Um, I would say from, you know, some age seven to eight through to 12 primarily. Mm -hmm. um, and really works with them not only on their baseball, but really uh, on their on their studies as well. And we also use a lot of our high school players and in some cases college players as as counselors for the program uh, um interesting uh, what's by the way the I, I i both of my children no one of them went to um went to the camp last summer because you want to hear how much the camp is free Nah, it wasn't free but it was call it free it was it was a hundred dollars a week wow Hundred dollars a week for eight for uh for eight weeks. Wow. So um, you know, that's that's you know, how do you beat that? I mean, my other son who who goes to camp pays um a significant, you know, significant I think triple that. And he doesn't even go as long. Andre. So what are the hours at the camp? Andre. What are your hours? Oh, I think the hours were like maybe um I think they were around 9 a.m. to uh, 3 p.m. And that's every day? Every Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know, a lot of the, a lot of the um, kids that attend, you know, are, are people who play on our, our teams. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it, is, it is coordinated with our teams. But uh, there are players there. And there are people who attend that are not, you know, one of our, our players. Okay. So we have kind of a mix of both. All right. Um, they, 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 where, where, where do, where do the children play? I'm sorry. Say that again. Like, oh, where, where do your kids play for parents who are interested? Where do they practice? Where do they play? Oh, where do they pay? Is that what you said? No, play, play. What? Where, where do they go? Well, you're talking about the summer camp or our program in general. Uh, in general. Okay. Or, so our program in general. Um, is basically headquartered at in Brooklyn at the parade grounds. is our home field. Uh, we also use um, a Nostrand playground, um, which unfortunately is about to be changed, turned into a recreation center. Uh, but it has been uh, one of our home fields for a number of years now. So our, our base is is Brooklyn. But in order to get the in order to get um, the level of competition that we're looking for, we have to go beyond, you know, Brooklyn. So we do play in all the five boroughs, and we also uh, more and more um, have our teams playing out in Long Island uh, to get the best competition that we possibly can. 
Uh, we also belong to a number of national organizations. So if we do well locally, we do get the opportunity to, to travel out of state. Um, over the years that I've been with the organization, I think we've, we've played in 21 different states, uh, probably as far west as New Mexico and Oklahoma, mm -hmm. uh, as far south as Florida, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, uh, as far north as Vermont and Maine. So, and, and then we've been in the Midwest quite a bit as well, but our, but our home base is, is, is Brooklyn. Yeah, I, I, I saw my son's schedule um, right now. He's going to Maryland. He's going to this. And I think one team just went to Florida. Didn't one of the teams just That's correct. Florida. Our um, our 10-year-old team uh, just played in a tournament that was in the uh, in the Sanford area of Florida, which is right outside of um, Orlando. Uh, they went there um, during President's Week. And although, you know, we were a team from the north, which means that we haven't really been outside yet, uh, they competed very well against um, the other teams were pretty much all Florida teams. Mm. And they play year round. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to compete against them, but we have a very uh, talented set of players. And what's even nicer about the players that we have is that almost all of them came up through our instructional league. So they started I mean, with us in the four or five year old age range. And over a period of years through the coaching and working hard, they, develop their skills to the point where they can compete at a, at a national level. Right. Um, so the, the, the next question I have to, to ask is has to um, going back, practicing baseball. What are some of the skill sets that children learn um, over the period of time from the organization in terms of like sure. sports? So, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of concentration on the actual baseball skills, you know, hitting, fielding, pitching. But the other thing that um, is really important is that they learn a set of skills, soft, what they call, you know, I guess now these days, soft skills that really uh, are able, able to John didn't utilize learn that, he's still sore. throughout the rest of their life. <laughs> so, so we really emphasize um, working hard and uh, putting in a best effort. You know, having a goal and then putting in the best effort you can to achieve it. Um, we obviously stress teamwork. Uh, another important thing is that, you know, what a lot of people like to say is that, you know, baseball is a game of failure. Because if you get three hits and ten at bats, right, you fail seven times out of ten, you're considered a uh, top quality player. <laughs> so you also have to learn how to um, deal with adversity. Yes, And I think uh, baseball and sports in general is just a very good environment for dealing with adversity and learning how to deal with it and understanding mm -hmm. that things are not always going to go your way. True. And you know, what we like to tell our players is that, you know, the winners um, are the ones that can pick themselves off the floor and point themselves in the right direction and get themselves back um, in the right spot. You know, anyone could be a good winner, but being able to recover from adversity mm. and, and gaining success is, is the big win. That's that. What you just said is is like a, a major token, because in life, that's what you have to go through constantly. Disappointment, adversity, but you still got to keep going. And then that adversity life. that builds character. Mm -hmm. a absolutely. And, it, and as I said, I mean, I think that one of the things that's. That's why nice I see the adversity you're losing to the bondies all the time, build my character. That you get to experience yeah, a lot yeah. of the same things that you get when you get into to real life in school and jobs, etc. Uh, myself, I mean, obviously, um, I am a volunteer for the organization. I spent most of my career uh, in software development as a designer, as a, nice. as a manager, as a vice president of development. And when people ask me, where did you learn your skills? Uh, what I tell them is that a lot of the skills that I've used in the, my professional job were learned on the, on the baseball field. Oh, it, because yeah, yeah, you, you, you have to learn camaraderie. You have to work, like you said, you have to do teamwork. Because in baseball, you alone can't win. You're dependent on other people and, and and group work. And so the pitcher pitches if the pitcher pitches and unfortunately the catcher drops the ball. The runner can run, so the, pit, the catcher has to catch a ball and the catcher picks it up. 
the first baseman has to catch the ball and so forth and so forth. So you, you know, you know, you, you can win a game one nothing or lose it one nothing too, depending on what kind of performance you have. So that's true. So he's mainly saying that it's teaching you leadership skills throughout. You yeah. know, that's, that's part of it. leadership, listening, sure. teamwork, mm -hmm. and leadership, and you know the concept of best effort. You know, I mean, each player has a different level of natural skills. I mean, you know, some people, for whatever reason, come to the table with stronger natural skills than somebody else. But each one has another level that they can reach if they put in the hard work. What I like to tell them is that the magic sauce is the effort. Mm. Right? Magic sauce is the effort. Mm. It's good. And, um, you know, we've seen, we've seen players that when they were seven and eight years old didn't look like they'd ever be able to play. And they've gone on to be top high school and college players. Mm. That, that's what you were talking about, uh, Dr. Bryant, when you were saying, you know, after a while, it, you know, also what I was saying, you know, you have people who have innate skills and people who have learned skills. And you were talking about giving that effort. If you, you got to put the time in, right. You, you know, you, right. you, you, you can't sit there, even if you have great talent and you don't work at the talent, you're going to lose the talent. So, yeah, uh, um, I, and you know, you, sometimes people sit there and get really mad, John, that, that, Oh, why is this person surpassing me? And I'm bet I was better than well because the person outworked you. That's pretty much what happened. So you might have the natural skills, but eventually you'll get a work outwork. Uh, it, it, you, you were talking about funding and everything else. Um, what is the 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 if somebody needs to find out information, do you have an open session? Do you have a what's going on? How do they find out um, about these things and website or so forth? Yeah, so we do have a, a website, and we do have someone who maintains a website for us, so uh, we keep it very active. Um, our website is uh, bonnieyouth.org, and uh, it's a great place to start following the organization. We also have a Facebook page and, you know, Instagram and Twitter as well. Um, so um, that's really the place to start. Um, also, I mean, particularly now that we are going to be heading outdoors, uh, we will be at our clubhouse, you know, on the weekends. You're more than anyone is more than welcome to come in, and um, we're always looking for um, new players, Ringers. people to, to help out. So, um, anyone who needs information, by all means, start with our website and then you know, go from there. Yeah, um, did you? Oh, there you go. Um, John said you need to stop getting ringers. He keeps saying this word ringers, 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 ringers. I don't know who he get this from, Jerry. <laughs> what does he get the word ringers? Was it? I'm telling you, it, this is. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a friend of mine. Her 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 son plays for you. I'm trying to remember his name, and he's a pretty good ball player too. I think he's like maybe 13, 14, maybe 15 years old. Okay. Yeah, he plays for the plays for the Bonnies, and his mom's right, well, good. Always traveling. Always. Uh, oh all yeah. Over. Uh, uh, that, his sister. His sister plays basketball with my daughter. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you know, um, you know, this this year my my nine year old is is going to be traveling. I think every other weekend or almost every weekend so far. Um, I think the experience of traveling. Oh man, definitely, I love the travel teams. Yeah, we had yeah. the traveling teams. That's what I love. You know, parents, you also will get the experience of seeing other cities because you know a lot of us don't travel. A lot of children don't. You know, I was thinking about that. I didn't travel a lot growing up. Except like trips, I didn't go on except for schools. Or hey, Jerry, you know what I want to ask you? I always watch these, the Little League World Series, right? In um Pennsylvania, Williamsport, uh, Will yeah. Williamsport. Yeah. yeah, I always wonder why well, well, I never see all, uh, teams like the Bonnies uh, or Gil Hodges or or right. Youth Service South Shore traveling team I see players. In, involved in that I, I i always try to figure out how does that work out how, okay how, so how the, uh, the, the issue is that um little league is a um is a brand name okay okay so it's a, a national organization um which runs you know tournaments uh and you know runs governs both local leagues as well as um tournaments okay and um in Brooklyn, Little League is Little League at one time in Brooklyn was very strong. 
Matter of fact, Gil Hodges actually um, was a, a little league at one time and a very strong one. Okay, they never made it to the, I don't think they ever uh, made it to the National World Series, but they were very strong. But the problem with Little League is there's very restrictive rules associated with Little League. Okay. You can only have players from a certain uh, neighborhood. Uh, really? They restrict how many players you can have of each age. And the field itself, I mean, is a is a very small field for the age players that they are that they're servicing. Mm-hmm. So to see some of those twelve year olds, right, in Little League pitching from where they're pitching from um, is, is really uh, crazy. Our, our 11 and 12 year olds play on a field um, where the bases are 70 feet. Um, whereas little league plays on a 60 foot field uh, pitches mound in little league um, is I believe about 45 feet. Our pitching mound is about 54 feet. Mm-hmm. So um, um you know, Little League is one of these organizations, you know, without uh, wanting to sit here and throw stones that you know, has a very strong national reputation, but their actual program is really not as strong as, as other programs. Right. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, thanks, for, thanks for that, Jerry. A better understanding. Yeah, because I, I, I do have a better understanding because I was, I was wondering the same one of the same conversation. I never see us. I think the last team I saw was that kid from the Bronx, and it was overaged. I don't. Yeah, remember. that was a number of years ago. I mean, we actually uh, played against him a few years after that. Uh, after that, that's interesting. Yeah, so I wonder he, what, he, I wonder what happened. happened to him. I mean, he, I guess he was around um, maybe thirteen and maybe fourteen, even, and trying to pass for a twelve-year-old. Right. And but they, when he got they, older, when he was around 16 or 17, we actually um, uh, played against him. Yeah. I wonder what happened to him. It was very interesting to know the story. Yeah, um, I don't think uh, – my understanding is that he kind of leveled out okay. when he played high school ball, but I don't think he had a significant college or professional career. Uh, yeah. All right. Interesting. Um, so you said to, in order to get in touch with you, Bonnie Baseball, um, Bonnie Youth. Org. Uh, what is the phone number or, you know, leave a message? Sure. So the phone number, the best phone number is our clubhouse number. It's uh, 718-941-4698. Um, if we're not there, you can leave a message and then we would get back to you. All right. Awesome. Um, and and the the camp starts. So, for, so is, the, is the information for the baseball camp on the, on the site or that's something later on? Uh, there might be something on there, but we will be putting something up as we get closer to the summer. And when, when does the season start? The official well, season, the season starts at a different time for each age group, but our younger teams, um, ages seven to 12 are going to be starting the season. Um, April 9th is going to be our opening day parade and ceremony. Uh, we haven't been able to have it for two years because of, uh, the virus. But this year we are planning to go back to having a uh, parade. We started our clubhouse on Church Avenue, and we parade through the club, uh, through the uh, parade grounds, and then um, uh, down through Prospect Park. And we used to end up at Models, but unfortunately Models is no longer. No longer. Us. Models is no longer for it. But we do end up at uh, Bobby's Department Store, which is one of our sponsors, and then we come back to Prospect Park and have a. Um, you know, refreshments and the actual ceremony. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Look, unfortunately, I, I, I just went to tell me April 9th. I know I won't be there. I'll be in Albany this Black Caucus weekend. The same weekend. So I'll, I'll be up there. But my sons will be with there. You know, I, I, I want to end with a, a, a thought. Um, what kind of talent do you need to get started with baseball? Because I, I think a lot of parents sure. think that right. their child is well, not even In our instructional help. league, we do not require any previous experience whatsoever. That's good. That's good. And our goal is really, um, re- our goal for instructional league, it's a developmental league, and we're really trying to accomplish two things. I mean, one is the obvious thing, uh, which is to teach skills, baseball skills. But the second thing is to cultivate uh, interest and enjoyment in the game. 
Because, you know, the bottom line is if you develop the skills but the player doesn't like to play, it doesn't do you much good. So we really try to set up an environment where we not only are teaching them baseball skills, but really um, trying to cultivate an interest and enjoyment. And one of the things about baseball, I think it's true of most sports, but uh, uh, it's particularly true of baseball, is that it's kind of like swimming. One of the things they say about swimming is that if you learn how to swim when you're very young, it's, it's usually pretty easy. But as you get older, it becomes harder to learn how to swim. And baseball is the same thing. If you start when you're four or five, it's pretty easy. But if you get up to 10, 11, 12 years old and you haven't played, it's almost impossible to catch up. You know, Jerry, I, I want to, um, before we end, I just want to, you know, I'm trying to make sense of this whole uh, Major League Baseball on strike. Right. You know, why? why, why Are they on strike? Or why? Or? Yeah, they're on strike. Well, it's, it's technically it's a lockout. It's a lockout. strike, but yeah. uh, it's a lockout. So it's a major league. They, the contract they had a collective bargaining agreement, uh, which was in effect for um, I guess it was around four or five years, and that collective bargaining agreement expired at the mm. uh, beginning of December, and the major league owners decided that rather than continue negotiating, um they decided to put a lockout in place. So the uh, players have been locked out basically since December 1st. Um, it's really a very sad situation because, I mean, I think you can you know, kind of place blame on, on both sides. Um, I, on the I, owner's I, side, um, what's happened over the last um, number of years is that the profits that the owners have been making – through TV contracts and um, the value of their teams going up right. is enormous. Right, right, right. And the amount of that that they've given back to the players as a percentage of what they're making um, is not nowhere near um, the amount that their profits have gone up by. So the I, players I, are basically saying that, you know, we want more of our, we want more of our share. I think the big major problem there, it goes back to the fans, right? I can't take my kids to a baseball game anymore. Yep. Because well, well let me right? tell you let me tell you a little story about that. So I first started following baseball in a 1980, uh, 1955 when I was uh, eight years old. The prices at Ebbets Field in 1955 were 75 cents for the bleachers, a dollar and a quarter for grandstand. $2.50 for reserved seats and $3.50 for box seats. 75 cents to $3.50. Mm. Yes. Wow. And, you know, one of the things that's happened um, is baseball was able more than any other sport to hold their prices down longer than the other sports. But once free agency came and the um, high prices of the players um, came in, is when the prices in baseball really skyrocketed. Mm. Wow! Yeah, they, so, need, they need to they need to go back. They need to go back to who brought them there. And, well, uh, the fans are getting. There's no question that um, the fans are getting the worst of it from both sides. I mean, uh, and the sad I, I, part I, I is, think, is I that think the fans there's need plenty to of room for them to compromise. Okay, that's um, the point. They, there's what plenty the owners of room are. to compromise, but they don't want to compromise. And both, well, that's both, the problem. They I mean, agree on both in sides. In other words, between the the, the money that the uh, the owners are proposing and the money that the players are asking for, there's a lot of room in there for a middle ground. Okay, but neither side is is really willing to to budge in a realistic way. I need them to go back to giving back to the fans. Like I'm sick and tired of everywhere you go, your pocket get squeezed. You can't, you can't go to the movie theater. You can't go to a baseball game. You can't, you can't do. Oh, well, yeah. What can. prices are absurd. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, the food prices, yeah. yeah, the food prices, either whether it's a movie theater or a sporting event, I mean, are out of sight. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's absurd. You know, and anyway, Jerry, I want to thank you for joining us on the village, right? Jerry, thank you very much, Jerry. I appreciate it. Well, and, my uh, pleasure. I hope we can uh, continue to make this a yearly event because 
obviously it means that uh, spring is is coming. Spring is right around the corner. And we we have All to. Right, be so reminded. thanks a lot for uh, having me. No and problem. I look forward. And, hopefully, we can do it again next year. Uh, and just I just one thing I want you to end on. You know, t- remind John that the Bonnies are better. Uh, than the uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, no, just uh, to be fair to John, you know, the Skyhawks are the football equivalent of the Bonnies. I mean, yeah. That's right. I want to being uh, successful. Our, our, our Pee Wees won a couple of championships. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's still All right. So, so guys, easy. thanks. Uh, thanks I'm a lot. All right. Thanks, take care, Jerry. Jerry. All right. Take care. God bless. Yeah. You know. Like, like, you know. It, the summer camp. I was. I was. I was very excited, man. Because mm-hmm. a lot of parents are asking eight to three. You have the baseball. I mean, you you provide your own lunch, but mm-hmm. for a hundred dollars a week, dog. How do, you, how, how do you how do you how do you how do you beat a hundred dollars a week like like eight hundred dollars a week for 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 for, for I mean eight hundred dollars for eight eight weeks is uh, phenomenal. You know, Roger. You know what? You know, on on this to getting to a very serious note. Uh, you know, we were talking about crime, and, and there was an incident. I think it was last year or a couple of months ago, in which. The uh, young man uh, went by the name of Alpo, uh, a drug kingpin Mm -hmm. that did uh, about 14 murders, but then turned to be a snitch. And (laughs) eventually, (laughs) you know, he got a 35-year sentence. And while snitching, the 35-year sentence got reduced down to he was out in 20 years. But you know what? What's what's interesting about it? He caught his demise because he was in witness protection program, and he kept coming back to Harlem. But what's interesting is they found out the person who killed him was a young man, twenty-seven years old. And you know what the what what was the cause for uh, Mister um, Alpo Martinez's death? You know what it was? What snitching? It all stem. It all stemmed from road rage. Road rage. Road rage. Uh, that's, that's where it stemmed yeah. from. We thought we thought one of um one of those uh individuals that he uh took their lives, uh-huh. you know. I, I have to plus, tell something about road plus too, being a man. being a snitch too. I, I it's unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen of the villages. I have no respect for snitches. Period exclamation points. Those who cooperate with the government and get other people in trouble <coughs> because of their own transgressions to <coughs> decrease their time, I have no respect for them. So, John, you, Mr. You, Alpo caught his demise. It sounds point. personal. It is personal. <laughs> caught his demise <laughs> based know. upon was, his I was, lifestyle. I was thinking the same thing that that he used to live. That sounds very personal. Yeah. As, they, as they say, as they say, karma's an MF. <laughs> right. So you know, something happened to me today. Now, so I, I want to tell the story, and then I want to get back because I want to know what people, what the thoughts are on, on this conversation about the snitches get snitches, right? Please. So, so please, uh, let's stop using that terminology. It's so ghetto fied. Please stop using that. All right. I, I, I'm from the ghetto. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you the story, right? Let me tell you the story. I, I was really pissed off, and I was actually coming in. I was mad. I was talking to my friend on the phone, and I was telling her what happened. I was mad as all heck, right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am wrong. Let's start off with that. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait Dr. Wait. Bryant, what day is today? Today <laughs> is December. December. Oh, December. Where, where are you? Where are you? Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. yeah. So, so here, here's what happened, and I, I'm gonna start off with I am wrong. December third. Right. Hold on, not December. March third. March third, 2022. All right. Roderick <laughs> Daly says. He was wrong. Right. So I'm say what Ladies and gentlemen of the villages, once again. March 3rd. March 3rd. Right. 2022. 22 at 8.15 p.m. This Roger is big. He admits when and he's he wrong. he was wrong. Right. So let me tell you what happened. Right. We're talking about road rage, right? Oh, so I, This woman is driving a school bus. Right. She's driving this big, you know, the, not the small ones, but the big ones. Right. And I'm cu- getting off on uh bell parkway because i'm rushing to get home mm. and i'm in i'm gonna make a left turn from the middle lane oh boy 
and she's making, yeah, I, I, I forget. And again, let me go back. This woman, let me highlight the word woman was driving the school bus, right? And as I got close to the front, I'm supposed to actually merge to the left to make the left turn because I'm not supposed to make the left turn from the middle lane, right? Mm -hmm. She decided on a school bus that she was not going to give me blind. So she sped up the speed bus behind the next bus and looked at me funny. So I still made the left turn and then she made the left from turn. The middle lane, from the middle lane, right? Yeah. No, it's not like that. It's a two. It's, it's not... I, the legal part was making the left because it's only the right lane. The left lane, leftmost lane was supposed to be the turn. That's you made a turn, man, from the middle lane. That's right, all. Stop that, right. But us. but but I don't want you yelling the middle lane like you know like oh my god the middle lane like it was crazy. It was the it left. Was, lane. Wait, wait, wait. It wait, was. Hold on. The, the left driver, lane. A school left, bus driver. On, listen, listen, the left lane is supposed to make a left turn. Okay. The middle lane is supposed to go straight or make a right. So let's just be clear. It's not like I was doing bad with traffic. Yeah. So you are one of those drivers that cut people off. What's really uh, okay? Uh, like, all right, I got you. Camera. Right, but she camera. was what we call a stereotypical female driver who just said, "You know what? It was it was more important, right? It was it was more important for me to tell you that I am the boss of the road in a school bus and say, you know what? I could probably lose my job if for the Two seconds that was going to say for him to go ahead in front or, and I was like, all right, you don't want to give me the blight? I'm good. Mm -mm. But then the fact that she turned into my lane, that I think made me even more upset. And then she's like, look at me like, Ugh. I'm like, and again, this is one, one of those things, John, where I said, it's better to be alive wrong than dead right because she is right that i shouldn't be cutting her off but she mm -hmm. now she was going to lose her life because technically if you hit me with the school bus you how are you gonna what are you gonna say to your boss because your sheer ignorance you're gonna her hit off. Me. Cut her off. It, she's still losing her job because by law she saw me she just decided that road rage was going to step in and she wasn't going to give up lot so it's not like it was, uh, it was, oh, he just cut in front of me. No, I didn't do that. She literally saw me, looked at me, and laughed. <laughs> right? So the question about road rage. I'm wondering what happened with this road rage, though. Uh, I mean, audience, what do you think? What, 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 what do you think about that, that, my story? Do you think, like, I have a right to be upset even though I, I'm wrong? Absolutely somewhere? not, especially a school bus. Absolutely. What if your child was on that school bus? How would you feel? If, if somebody what, 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 they're, they're going to make a left turn from the middle lane, cut the school bus off. No, or I wasn't. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Let's get it right. I wasn't really. I wasn't cutting off the school bus. She had the ability to just let me go in front. I, oh, I didn't like. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't. Listen, you're not driving the school bus. So uh, if what she, I'm saying, no, no, no. What I'm saying to you is, she did. She just decided I was not going to go in front of her. Okay. You know, like some, you ever you ever drive on the street and then somebody's driving straight ahead and you know you need to go over to the left. The person and you can right. wait. You can wait. You can slow down. Fix the camera, please. Irrespective of that, the bottom line is, Roderick, you were wrong. You weren't supposed to make the turn. She did not extend the courtesy to you, and that's it. Move on. All right. What happened with Alpo? I was. Well, looking, well, I, I was. Look, I was. What, what happened to Alpo? He got the courtesy extended to him. All right, let's move along. Right, right. So you, so, 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 um, so you, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm Andre what and you, I. Were what, 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 what are you fumbling, man? What, what, no, 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 Miss, no. Miss Waterman. We want Hello. to work in the village. How you doing? Thank you, thank you for having me. Hello. Hello. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, um, uh, you are, uh, Monique, yes. do me a favor, lower your screen a little bit so we can see more of your face and your shoulder. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. We're seeing, we're seeing, we're seeing above your head more than we're seeing you. Okay, still the same? Bring, no, bring the, bring the monitor forward. Yeah, I ain't going no more forward, I tried. She's okay. good, she's good. All right. good. How you doing, Miss Waterman? 
I'm doing well and yourself. Busy day as usual. But how's everybody doing tonight? We are we are blessed and highly favored. And highly favored. Yes. Forget all yes. that. I, I am. I'm. Forget all that. I am just excited. You know why I'm excited? Why are you excited? Because we have three bombardiers right here. Three. Oh yes, my eleven in the house. My eleven junior high school. Joanne is just mad because she didn't go to oh, my eleven. My eyes. <laughs> oh, my eyes. Anyway, Roger, fix your camera. Right. Uh, it's Andre. Yeah. Andre. Yeah. So, so what's going on, Monique? How you doing? Pleasure I'm to doing have well. You. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be back again on the Village. Thank you so much. Yes. 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 You. 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 Perfect. You, you are. Better. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful smile. Andre is perfect. Well, welcome to the village. We're happy to Thank have you, you so here. Much. I appreciate it. Please introduce yourself to everybody and who you are, what do you do? We want okay. to know. Okay. So my name is Monique Chandler Waterman. I'm a community advocate. I'm an educator. I'm a chaplain. I'm a mother of four beautiful children. I'm a healthcare worker as well. And I love my community. I've been in the community all my life. I was born and raised right here in East Flatbush in District 58. So I'm excited to just see and- District 58? What's District 58? The New York State Assembly District 58. Oh man. That it covers. That's where I live in that district. Oh. All right, That's, uh, you know, um, I, let, let's let's get a little. You're 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 very excited. Born and raised. Tell us a little bit of history. Tell me about. We don't want to hear oh. about my eleven. We no, no, it's, no, no, it's not just. But that's part of. No, no, no. We, in all seriousness, though, that's part of the story, right? Yes. Because she was born and raised. So tell us about your cementing your role in the community, like. Okay. So you, you, you like t tell us about that. Like I mean, you love this community so much. You've done so much within this community because you were born in district, and yes, also because she went to my level. Because you know what, she went back yes. there and she fought. Yes. She so, I'll say I'll start from as an educator. When I had my first daughter, Unique, I didn't like the childcare system, so I started a twenty-four hour ch childcare center. So I went to PS135 and so did my kids. And my mother went to PS135. And then I went back to PS135 and I taught. And I taught there for a little bit. And then I created after school programs. So now it serves 110 students after school in our science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Then I went on. Yeah, That's thank you. And I went over to my. My 11th junior high school, my mother attended my 11th junior high school as well. I met my husband there at 11 years old, and I went back to teach. Who's your husband? School. Eric Waterman. He is a football coach as well and educator. At where? At Tilden? Yes. He's no I longer at Tilden. Eric, tell Eric yes. I said hello. Yes, yes. You worked with him in politics years ago. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> I said hello. Yes, yes. He talks about you a lot. Um, wait, wait, what's the name? Of, I'm sorry. What's the name of the football? I, I, I'm sorry to cut you. What's the name of the football team that he coaches now? What is that? What the the youth football? Yes. What is the name of it? Youth football, the Cowboys. The Cowboys. The Cowboys. He started, he started off with the Cowboys. Okay, all right. Because I'm just trying yeah. to. John is upset from 50 years ago about the, some Skyhawks or something like that. No, oh, yeah. my husband played for the Skyhawks. My husband played for Skyhawks football okay, when yeah, he was a yeah. youth. Uh, right, John, is, yes. John is a little bit caught up, but anyway, go ahead. So you were saying well, maybe you bring him on around. to talk. Oh, you need to bring my husband on to talk about Skyhawks then. Yeah. He's so <laughs> actually one of the coaches at Skyhawks. We digress. Um, actually coached my son in high school. Oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah, and he also coached my husband and he coached my son. So that's great. It's great when you have that village, that mm -hmm. generation after the generations you're going through the community. So then I, from my 11th junior high school, I created um, after school programs there under the crisis management system. Unfortunately, we're in a, in a community of heavy gun violence. So we work with kids holistically to show um, their trauma through art and various programs. And then I also taught at Tilden High School. I didn't attend till the high school, but my husband did, my son did, and a lot of my family members did. So that no, is that's 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 the uh that's the icing on the cake. Tilden High. Yes. Tilden High School. Yeah, so she didn't so attend Tilden. 
I, I didn't. My husband did. did so that's but I was, I was also a coach. I was also a coach there. I did track and field, cheerleading, stunt. You know when you see them, you throw them in the air. They throw the laser in yeah. the air, catch them, which is a very hard technique. I um, bought that program to um, PSAO in the stunt. So it's called stunt. It's separate from cheerleading. What so what is the I, difference between cheerleading and booster? I think is there a difference? So cheerleading and stunt, I know booster, I think that comes a combination with stepping, if I'm not mistaken. But for me, we didn't have boosters, we had cheerleaders. So that's the pom poms, you're cheering, you're on the ground. Stunt is you're in the you create, you, yeah, you create pyramids can, and really, can you do Rudy as a cheer? R U D D I E? Give me a no? <laughs> I'll get you some pom poms. Yeah, no, 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 I will not be playing with no pom poms. <laughs> that will not be happening. But, but in all seriousness, all these sports and activities was a way that we could have the kids express themselves through athletics, through arts, through cultural enrichment. So we found different ways to engage and do mentorship. So the the backbone of everything was mentorship for us, making sure their social emotional was taken care of. And we did that through the sports because team bonding is what builds community and teach them through that lens. And we that led to civic engagement, right? When I worked for Jemani, I had the same kids at Tilda High School um, participate in participatory budgeting. So they got field lights for their school, over a million dollars they were able to secure. So for me, if we want our kids to do better, we got to pour into them. So whatever I know, if you, they want to be a radio host, they should be with you right there daily learning every single part of it. We can't ask them to do better if we are not teaching them better. So what I do is I teach them everything from the from the ground up and their voice matters, their opinion matter. I don't say you're young and you're, you're a minor, um, what you say don't matter. I'll let them be part of integral things that we're doing. Like for instance, I started a nonprofit organization called East Rockledge Village Inc. I'm no longer there, my husband's running it. We have we have youth on the board. So technically the youth kind of tell me what to do. They're supervisors, they come through the program, they get a job. East Rockledge Village Inc. wasn't just created for my children, it was created for everyone else. So anybody has an opportunity that cares for the mission to run the organization. Success is when you leave something and you is still is still successful. That's a great leader. So I left well, the organization. Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm listening to you, and yes. you know, you have done more work than a lot of elected officials have done in oh, their own communities. You. you know, oh, thank so you. I, so I, I appreciate your your commitment. Thank you, thank you, you know, so much. I, I'm I'm very excited to have you on, um, Monique. Not because not just because I've I've known you for uh, so many years, but I, I, I'm 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 pleased because I want people to know that you have been working, you know, in the community. I, there's an expression I was thinking of, like hands to boots. I just I, I can't the, the expression boots to the ground, ground. Boots, boots to the ground, ground yeah. from you know for a long time, and 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 that you you you're not just a person who's just talking about your community. You're talking about things that really that you have done or been a part of to make that, to help with that effort for change. And one of the things that you focused on is gun violence. Why is that important to you? Well, well, violence I, overall, but also violence, violence overall, right? Cause we have, we're in a community of heavy gun violence. Unfortunately, our kids are seeing bullet holes in their door when they go into the apartment. We're ducking from bullets in our house. Um, people are getting shot from babies. So, when I As was young, fact, I was... recently, I, I think mm -hmm. it was her funeral on Monday um, with Dorothy Dozier, uh, with, yes. that's also within your community. I know you did something for that. Too. So in your conversation, I want you to talk about the young lady that was, um, John, that was stabbed and killed right outside of Pathmark a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yep, 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 um, yep. I, that's within your community. So you could talk about that as well. And what that has, that has how does that even continue to motivate you for the change? Yes. So... With gun violence, I'll tell you a story and I'll get back to Miss Dorothy, which was heart wrenching. So my brother and I attended my 11. And what do you do when someone mess with you? You call your older brother. So I did that one day. And let me say the whole school was surrounded. A lot of Tilden high school friends he had. And they was about to make a permanent um, solution for something very temporary. And I didn't like that power. So my brother was hanging out in the 50s. He knew a lot of people. He was a fighter. He fought with his hands. Um, and... When I fought, the whole school fought. And when I realized that my brother had me that protected, I spoke to him and said, if something happens to you, we will prevent a fight. 
My father wasn't there. My mother worked and my mother worked three and four jobs. My grandparents had to raise me. And my mother said, take care of your sister. She didn't tell him or no one told him exactly what that looked like. So for him, somebody mess with your sister, you call the whole crew. And yeah, right, right. when I spoke to him about that, he's he was like 13. I was 11. The next time someone messed with me, he went to their house and spoke to their parents. So he have um he's 13 years old, 11. He said, you know, you mess with my your, your child mess with my sister, and I want to handle this, you know, a mature way. So can you tell your your child to not mess with my sister before this be a misunderstanding, lack of better work? I didn't know that was crisis intervention. So mm -hmm. a lot of people judge what kids are doing or they're part of a gang, but they don't understand how they get there. My family's from Barbados and Jamaica. You come for the American dream. And when you get here, there's a lot of red tape when it comes to immigration. You can't get a job if you don't have your paperwork. A good job, you have to get off the books. You got to do sleeping job. You got to stay three or four days. You're not with your kids. You don't come with family. And then you leave your child in the house and say, stay in the house. Don't open the door. Sometimes they want to go outside. It's not they don't have anybody else and they get caught up in the wrong um, atmosphere or they get bullied in school and that person come and show you security and a father figure and it's a family a gang is a family for people and it fits and it suits them when they, in the time they need so when it comes to gun violence you have to look at it from both aspects what got children what, what why are our kids here so we created East Rappage Village because I shouldn't have been parentified at 16 years old I was paying help my mother pay rent at 18 I was helping her pay mortgage so we are getting given all these parental duties and then we are we we are told not to to stay in a child's place and do certain things. So we're helping our parents to try to live that better life. And we need to understand where the root of it. You don't have stable housing. You don't have money. You don't have your um, your status is not where it should be to be here. You had a disadvantage. So gun violence to me starts for the root of that. I don't look at a shooter and blame them. I think the trigger is pulled when we don't have the resources, when we don't have the funding, when we don't have proper education, the physical triggers pulled years later, but the triggers already pulled when we didn't give them that, those you know, resources. You, you, know, you know, Monique, you're, you're yeah. so correct. And, you know, just, uh, it's just, you know, my good friend, uh, Mr. B, uh, this is what, uh, you know, he has been doing all his life over there in East New York. And he transcends that. He has what we used to call the Alpha School. But now he created, uh, we, we, we got a social club over there in which, you know, we have individuals, um, adults from all walks of lives, and we have communications uh, about ways in which we could uh, be helpful in our communities and, and just take it back. You know what I'm saying? You know, Mr. B Social Club over in East New York. And that's where I am uh, sometimes. Most of the times, people from the communities, we have the precinct uh, people come around so we can have this discussion about our youth and what's going on, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it, it, what you're doing, I mean, you, you're doing it. And, you know, I, I really, I, I commend, you know, because uh, sometimes a lot of our elected officials are not are not doing that. And you, you, you're not running for office. You're not, you know, you're just doing something out of a life experience. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have created all these different things. And and also what I, would, to my 11. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that. And I had the privilege of working with um, Mr. Daly here at my 11 junior high school. And he knows when it was an issue, I'm finding a solution. I think that we could, we could, we could fall in the trap of people complaining about stuff, but I'm about what, how are we going to fix it? And how am I going to be part of that? I, my kids didn't ask to be brought into this world. And I could say my kids are good. They're in the house. My husband and I are taking care of them. But my kids have to go out into this world. They got to yep. go to the station. Yep. And Bullet doesn't say, well, her kids are good. Her kids are good. This is black. This is white. Bullets have no name. So when people realize this is all of our issue and holistically, we need to provide wraparound services to take care of our community, then we would be better off. We have to be united. And we can't judge people. You don't know what people are going through. So when I see a parent, I used to have that white van, 15 passenger van. I had a daycare center. Really? It's out of line. I was a van driver. I used to get them in the van, call their parents, take some, take them home. I'm the nosy person, a good nosy. I'm gonna figure out what's happening. I'm gonna bring them there. <laughs> <laughs> I the like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. And we, and we do occupy the corner where we go where there's a hot 
spot area. That means there's gun violence, there's substance abuse, there's something happening there. And I'm going to tell you, anytime I see one of my students out on the streets, they go back to that. Oh my gosh, Mrs. Waterman, they hug me, they embrace me. It don't matter who's around them. They're still somebody's child. Yeah, a shooter is somebody's child. And when someone gets shot, you do, you lost that family, that victim, that person that got shot, and you lost the shooter as well. So we lose kids twice every time. And our kids are not living past 20 years old. So for me, if I do my part by pouring into the community, not for no political agenda, I was never trying to run for anybody's office. I was I went to Senator member Nick Perry and I said, I want a community center. He was like, go to community board 17. I didn't know I was going to see Mr. Daly there. And he annoyed me every day of the week when I was there. But <laughs> then and that's he told not going to change. That's not going to change. I'm still going to. And then I organized. He's still annoying. He's still annoying. He's still you know, annoying. I, and I'm I never wrong. By the way, I'm never wrong, <laughs> except for on March third, <laughs> eight fifteen p.m. Twenty thirty-seven p.m. No, no, no. <laughs> I admitted to being wrong at that time. I, Oh, yeah, that was yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then um, Mr. Rudy Daly was there when we was organizing black associations. He used to come to our black meetings uh, as well and our black parties. So we have to pour into our community and find solutions where there's issues. But well, like I was saying, when I went to the same member office, I wasn't trying to run for office. Then I met Jamani Williams and I was like, oh, some so elected officials be by meeting me and Mr. Perry and Mr. Williams, I saw good things that elected officials could do. Because, you know, for the Caribbean, we hear a lot of bad things about elected officials and the groundwork they lay. And I was like, wow. And then when this, when um, Jamani left to go to public advocate, before that, he asked me, would I run for the seat? I said, of course, because if he did such great work, we were working together side by side for over 10 years. I don't want somebody else to come in that doesn't have the same energy or can't build on that. So I was honored to run at that time. I didn't win the seat, but I won the knowledge. And it wasn't about winning a seat. It was about how can we win for the community by you being united. The, the passion of the work lives in my, it lives in my heart. It doesn't live in a title. I'm a child of God. You know, I have a plenty of titles. I'm a wife. Um, we could go on. But just doing what you got to do and the powers and the people, this community raised me. My neighbor took me to church. They walked me to school. I want to continue giving back to the community that raised me. But I will definitely be running for office. And actually, I am running for office. So I know we're not talking about that. But just to correct you, I am running for office. You know what? I, have, <laughs> I, 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 I yeah. really do have to commend you because as I'm listening to you, I'm listening to a combination of different organization that is in, you know, just all squeezed up in your tiny self. Um, which I, I actually am excited. I'm over here cheering you on a hundred percent. Thank you so much. Thank you. You mentioned so many different, um, different topics that we need, different topics that unfortunately at the end, like you're a combination of God squad, you know, the parent, what the church is supposed to do. So, um, I, I and educators, of course, what we used to have block organization, you know, block, you know, um, you know, big mouth. Judy used to be down the block telling your parents what you, you know, hey, I noticed them down at the corner or whatever. We don't have that community anymore. And we spoke about that not too long ago, a couple of weeks back, that that's missing in our village. That's yes. missing in our community. And to, to hear the drive and the passion on what you're continuing to do um, is commendable. And, you know, definitely people need to hear about this and, and the ways to support and build what it is that you're doing so that, you know, organizations like this can be planted in different areas. So, because, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We and do I not want to mention, I worked side by side with God Squad over 10 years. We came up with the first shooting response, me and Pastor Monroe's. So oh, we nice. were there for the riots. We were there in the streets. Before there was crisis management, cure violence. We didn't know anything about that. We knew people was getting shot. And we were out there on the front lines doing that work for all over 10 years. I'm a chaplain as well. So I go yes, to Cotton Road Park. Sorry? Yeah, you mentioned you were a chaplain. What church, you said? I'll go to Clarendon Road Church, but my chaplaincy is from Worldwide Association of Small Churches and Chaplain well, under yeah. Bishop, I believe, Kirk. So, so, cha so, Chaplain Waterman, you know, <laughs> during during COVID, I know you were actively involved during COVID too. Yes, explain I was. To the, e and Mercedes, 
me and Mercedes Narcisse got in our car, put on our well, Mercedes who? Mercedes yes. who? Uh, Mercedes Mercedes. You, you may know that, her. Man. You uh, may know her. So we, um, and you know, she's a nurse. She just won for city council. I'm so excited for her. First black woman to hold. She's that all right. She's all right. Yeah, I know. I know you love Mercedes, so we could pretend. So, uh, <laughs> so we got in our car and we had seniors. I do a lot of senior programs. She ran a senior adult senior um, program as well. So we went in our car. We dropped off food. We was like, "What can we do?" We drop off masks, hand sanitizer, and then shortly after doing that work, well, kids were off too. So what we did, my husband and I got all the kids, gun violence went up. Like it went up like 200%, it felt like. We got all the kids from the areas of gun violence and we got them on the streets helping us distribute masks, popping up tents, training them. And they came up with issues, questions like how does food insecurities lead to gun violence? And then they started a pantry. So we have a youth pantry came out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then I was hired, I'm a healthcare worker. I was hired by... Test and Trace, which falls on the Health and Hospital. It's a campaign that came out of the pandemic. And I was the first borough outreach director, one of the probably the second person I was hired during the pandemic in 2020. And I ran a campaign of over 500 um, canvases on the ground that dispatched across the city to make sure we give information about COVID-19 with the masks and the, how to keep yourself safe. And then when the testing came out and did the pilot program for the vaccines, I started with the senior center and we went on from there. So I'm still full-time. I work for Test and Trace. Part-time, I work for St. Memo Nick Perry. Damn, Monique. Damn. <laughs> Do you ever? I guess that's Jamaican in you, you know. Yes, all three them and jobs. Four jobs. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah, Asian yeah, side, mix yeah, that all together. Yeah. And don't forget that your wife and a mother, those are a big jobs and Yes, jobs. yes. My four and jobs. Hard two kids, jobs. And hard two jobs. Two kids in college, one in high school, one in junior high school. So my son is in South Carolina, HBCU, Benedict College. My daughter goes to Brooklyn College. I have a 20 year old. So you have a what? I have a 20 year old. You knew me when I had the 13 year old. Oh so no, I, I, I knew. You know, I, 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 years, probably. I, no, I, 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 I'm just saying, you look, you, look, you look like you're 12, really. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you, that. Uh, wait, wait, you, we, we share the same birthday sign, don't we? When is your birthday again? I'm a Capricorn, your birthday? January you're Capricorn? 14th. Oh, yeah, it was earlier, earlier day. You're Andre. Yeah, yeah, and Andre. Andre is the 17th of January. Yes. Yo, Andre. we got Gemini's in the house. Gemini, Doctor, <laughs> Gemini. <laughs> lift up, lift up, lift up. Daily, you see, you always starting something. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to start a fight. Um, because, <laughs> because, you know, that's you know, that's what you do. That, that makes but, me excited. Um, yes, you, you, there's some things that you did with the East Blackwood Village that I thought were spectacular, like the the step show that not just not the step show, the steppers. Um, not just I'm literally like the step team with within our community because a lot of times these, which what I liked about the step team, mm -hmm. right, was that a lot of times you go to college mm -hmm. and you join so sororities and fraternities and you see these things happening and you don't understand them. But you started, and it, it's so important, like people, sometimes, you know, on this program, we, we always talk about the village and how to raise the child and how to bring them up. What? And what we're trying to do is give them the experience mm -hmm. that in later life, they'll say, oh, I've been there, done that, and I don't have to react. That's differently true. and so what you're doing is like you're providing young people the opportunity one to stay off the street mm -hmm. right <laughs> stay and do something positive with yourself learn something positive when you talk about the different programs that you did and now uh, people who don't know about participatory budget and that's so important within your own community to say get things done but you have been doing things you know to provide services for um young people and that channel of East Flatbush Village because now I know that you're at PS 235 East Flatbush Village you're you know I know y'all you I, I don't know if you're still there but you're at Huddy Junior High School um at at one point um in mile 11 that so in 135 so you guys are trying to expand within the community what does it mean like what, what you did a program I don't know if you touched on it yet I didn't hear it um but Occupy the Corner what is what is yes. that about so Occupy the Corner is where you go to a corner of a hotspot area. It could be substance abuse. It could be anything that impacts someone's quality of life. Gun violence, people hanging out, neighbors are upset about something. And we go, we engage the youth that may be causing whatever perceived issue, and we engage them in resources, job opportunities. We ask them, what do you need? We have 
positive solution driven conversations to reduce the violence and they help us come up with a plan that is for their area. So they may say, well, people just like to call the cops on us. We need a job. You know, uh, we don't have a place to live. And then we take those um, issues concerned and we ask them to help us organize. So if I go to a block, we try to get the block association out. If they don't have one, we utilize those same guys that have the most influence on the block to help us organize the block. And then we work through them to help reduce the violence in the community or reduce the issue. And normally that work. Recently, we expanded Occupy the Corner to the Safety Alliance. I don't know if you heard about the Brownsville Safety Alliance in 73rd Precinct under Inspector Anderson. Basically, it's partnering with the police, but the police move their cops from off of a particular beat or two block radius. And the the way the police help is if a 911 call is made and it's not criminal activity, they will let the violence um, interveners de-escalate that situation. You know, violence interrupted. So what we did with that, we brought that to East Flatbush based on Inspector Anderson model that he did in Brownsville. I helped out with that. And we got the kids from the neighborhood, those affiliated, those not affiliated, those people that think that they're problems. And they organized the ground. They gave out the flyers, they did door knocking, and they told us what resources they need in their area. And for, I would say for three days straight, for six hours, we flood the area resources. So it's basically tables on every corner throughout the streets from the 40, it was 49th to 51st on Church Avenue. Um, we have substance abuse, we have gun violence, we have a lot of stuff going on. And they helped us come up with the roadmap of what was needed. And we met people at their doors. And we enrolled everyone in that environment into what we were doing. So it wasn't about East Southbridge Village, it wasn't about Monique or Sam and Monique Perry. It was about all of us forming an alliance to put our little resources together to help the whole community. So Occupy, well, Nina, I, I think you said it. it's important. It, you know, yes. I learned we, we have to meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. And if they're at the corners, we got to meet them on the corners. If they're in the barbershops, if they're in, in the salons, we have to meet them where they are at. Because yes. we don't know the trauma that has impacted their decision making. Mm -hmm. And so mental health we, is a big thing. Mental health is huge. Huge. Yes. Especially now during this COVID has impacted a lot of a lot of people. Yes. So what is so important is our ability to 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 be open minded when it comes to dealing with our youth mm -hmm. and listening to what they have to say to us mm -hmm. and then coming up with a solution to the problems that they see because they just want somebody who cares about them. And they're smart. They are so smart. But if the right person doesn't encourage them, it's yes. like people bring out the best in you. And when you speak to our kids, the, the, the information, the knowledge, and the way they can organize is if we give them that chance and listen to them and give them the resources. Out of that, we had a youth who had a clothing line. And we, we prepped him for his call we had a pop-up shop and everything. And he was able to make almost $1,000 or probably even more just with his own clothing line. So we have to invest into them. And we invested into them financially to show him that you can do this. That's a big booster. That's a motivator. And we have to do more things like that to make sure our kids are doing something positive. It's not enough to say, do something better, put down the guns. You have to give me a job and not $15 an hour. How am I going to pay to live somewhere, food, my family? So we have to be realistic in our acts. And if this is the way they feed their family, you can't take that away and tell them to do something else. You got to give them something else. So we have to be part of the change we want to see. Now, last week, I went to a summit last week in Queens that had that was very, very similar to what you are speaking about, cure violence, um, violence interrupters and everything. But the disconnect was the church. Mm. The disconnect was the mm. church because the thing is, a church is not just on Sundays. See, a, a, a smart church would collaborate with you, would go out on the street with you, would actually walk with you and meet people, the young people where they are, like you mentioned. And I think you being a chaplain um, is so important because they see that, hey, they're seeing different hats that you wear, but to see that, hey, you know what? You're open to all of that. You know, you reflect the church that might um, 
otherwise push them out. So it's so important that um, Thank you. churches open up their doors to get to know young people. Otherwise, you won't have churches. Mm -hmm. You're creating a, 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 a community of people who don't want to be bothered. And in order for us to grow as a community, um, it requires everybody, collaboration. Exactly. And no one is better than anyone. Schools, churches, um, police stations, government officials, parents, students, and, you know, just overall, mm -hmm. everyone to get together, the village to really, really exactly. grow and, and, and make changes because, you know, we could talk like you mentioned, all we want, oh, put down the guns, but what next? So exactly. what better way? Creating jobs, you know, mm -hmm. allowing them to have a venue to interact, to speak, to collaborate, to create. And then that way we will see change, not yes. just through yes. Thanks. I definitely agree. And to let you know, we're, um, I guess we're special here in District 58. We have God Squad and we partnered with them for over 10 years. So my pastor is on the ground with me occupying the corner. Not one pastor, two pastors, like three pastors. So I think God Squad have probably a collaboration of 90 churches in this, um, in the 6 7 precinct area. And we pray on the corners. So when we occupy, it's with prayer. We're out there with pastors. We're out there, everyone in the community. We have created that, like I said, over 10 years ago when a nine year old boy was shot on 45th and Church Avenue riding his bike. And he's doing well. He's in college. We're still in contact with his family. And actually, he's one. And he's part of his family's part of the God Squad. They go to one of those churches as well. So we are unique in this area where we have built that village, and we can always do more and show other people um, how it's done in this community and boast of what's already being done in other communities. But I'm glad to say and happy that I have the support of my church and other clergy to be out on the corners late at night. We used to do it till from 10 to 1 a.m. We shorten it during COVID because people are so sorry. Unfortunately, gun violence happen all times of day. It's not even germane just to 10 to 1 a.m. So we occupy all hours of the day now just because of the way the gun violence is going. But and, you know, to just to, you know, just a hey, Marlene, you are right. I, I agree with you. We need to educate yes, and empower. Definitely. And that's why you see what uh, Miss Waterman has been doing. She has been educating and empower our children. But most of all, she's been out on the she's been in the trenches and meeting them where they're at. And a lot of times we don't do that. But, you know, uh, thank you for. Um, thank you so much. Hey, Genta, is that my old oh, principal? Is that my <laughs> loving person? Thank you so much. I just saw Eddie Genta. I was like, I know that name. How are you doing? Oh, my yeah. gosh. Bring me yes. back to 11 years old again. So <laughs> yeah. 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 thank yeah. you um, so much. Um, Would you say I, Thank you so much. Yes. So, so just, just, just very quickly, um, in the last couple of seconds, I want you to kind of just wrap up with this thought here. I, I know the question was to John, um, but uh, you have do, been doing some of this work. Um, so before we we wrap up, just we need, just close us up with this. We need to mentor and empower our children. Education is a skill, um, and a, and and is also is a job. Right. So th how important that is. But I, I don't know that it's just children. Right. So it's not just children we need to look at. We also need to look at Everybody. young adults and, 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 and adults and all, because, you know, when you, you, the, the negativity that's happening within our community, it's not just happening with nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds. Right. It's also happening with 25, 26, 30 year old, 40 year old, right? The one yes. that Alfa Martinez is 27, was the kid that killed him was 27 year old and he was 55. So violence are happening at a different age of the kid that threw the feces on the subway. Also, you know, 43 years old. Um, yeah. But he's not a kid, he's a grown man. So violence is happening. So tell us about yeah, you, the need for mentoring and Mental health is a big, um, oh, I'm hearing feedback. Are you hearing it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so mental health is a big issue, and the it's a huge issue. Huge the, the age that you have trauma is the age mentally some people get stuck in that age. A lot of people are not um, diagnosed. Um, I think mental health left untreated or left taken care of or resources could develop into a mental health illness. When we talk about Dorothy Clark, who was stabbed by 
path mark, it was someone who had mental health um, illness, right? Meth living with mental health challenges, and their parents probably try to do everything they could do. But when you're an adult or even some minors and you, you do not want to take your medication or you want to get mental health, loved ones don't have any recourse. They don't have no oversight to make that happen. So they could be seen and trying to proactively get support and don't get support. And unfortunately, Dorothy died because of the lack of support and resources. I've sat in court with parents. I sat at the precinct where they're begging to get mental health services for their kids because of the trauma and they're not able to get that services. But when they get criminalized and they get arrested, all of a sudden, all mandates come in action. Mm -hmm. Why are we mandating after when proactively we can help? Mm -hmm. Mental health is a big issue in our community. And if it's not, and it needs to be more normalized. If my knee is hurting, I go to the doctor. If mentally I'm not feeling well, I should go to a professional, but we have to change the stigma when it comes to mental health. Even when the police department, there's a lot of people that's dying by suicide in the police department, and that needs to be a, that's a stigma in that um, area as well. So when we come to our community, there's so much multifaceted approaches. It's not one thing that leads to gun violence, it's all these things. If I don't mm -hmm. have a stable home, and we go back to the mom who came from here from Barbados or Jamaica or whatever Caribbean island, they come here for a better life, and they don't have that support or that outlet or those means or that money. So what happens? They get so desperate, and the 13-year-old really want to help their parent. They can't get a job. But guess what? Selling some weed will get me some job, and I can help pay my mother rent. And then the parents sometimes have to look and act like they don't know and take that money because then it's that or the shelter or on the streets. So some people are left to their own demise and they just have to do what they can to make a living. It's not a judgment thing. It's we have to survive. So we just need to make sure that we civically engage. We are voting for the right people. I always say when you vote for someone, what did they do five years for that day? from that day, 10 years? How consistent have they been? Elected official or a candidate shouldn't start when it's a, a, a office to run for. It should have been in there. It needs to be in your heart because if it's only in the power, then that's not going to go in the best direction for the community. You have to do policy and legislation based on people and on the ground. When you're on the ground and you live and walk and people shoot, you're going to create policy that reflects those people and you include people civically engage them have a monthly meeting i'll have a monthly meeting talk to them make sure they understand how census is important we didn't have ventilators we didn't have things in our hospital guess what we are one third of a person we are not counted in the census other communities are getting so much money because they're fully counted why because we mistrust government why because we were be used in so many ways it is not it's not our fault but it is our problem and we have to find ways to educate our community members where they're at and help them in this process understand what elect officials do hold them accountable what's the census why should we vote and get them motivated to seek the change that they need and i and we have to motivate the youth too if a youth could get you to buy 300 dollars jordans i think they could get parents to vote and they could do a lot of things in this community. So you know, you, 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 you know, Miss Waterman. You know, it's it, it, it's it, 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 it's correct. Uh, but I, I I think most of all, your commitment and dedication uh, allows not only us but allows people on you know that are listening understand that your your your, your dedication is to the uplifting of your community. And, you know, we in our community, sometimes we got to get past stuff, get past issues and do things that are for the benefit of the community. We have such a crab in the barrel mentality and we allow our personal likes or dislikes to cloud our judgments yes. when we're trying to make decisions for yes. the communities. And I say that to say this, irrespective of uh, whatever you choose to do in, in the future, the bottom line is stay with your dedication and commitment to those people in our community. Because at the end of the day, you said something very important to me. You may have lost the race, but you won the knowledge. And knowledge is power. Mm. Yes. Amen. I appreciate and, uh, Thank you right, so much. Uh, you know, uh, Monique, we, we, we look forward to hearing more from you uh, on The Village. Um, I know you have some announcements you need to make, but uh, we're going to share that next time that we get on. And thank you. You know, people should be motivated by you and by 
the things that you have been doing and will continue to do. So I thank you so much for joining us right here. On I appreciate you. Thank you All so right. much. It was nice meeting you, doctor. Of course. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I have a good, great evening. Um, you know, uh, John. Well, then you're right. You know, members of the Caribbean community, you're right about that. We're very dismissive because it's like a, it's like a taboo. We don't want to talk about it. That's something hidden. It's just like even my parents. You know, they didn't want to talk about the birds and the bees. That's unheard of. But you know, we're past that now. We have to be able to be open-minded and deal with issues that truly impact our community. So thanks for that comment, Mark. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 kind of glad also that Monique brought up a lot of things about violence and. And uh, we've been talking about violence today. And uh, speaking of violence, and I'll, every time I watch these things or hear these things, I think about the fact that a lot of people want to get us get rid of school safety. The fourteen year old kid that got shot at, at Boys and Girls High School mm -hmm. outside of Boys and Girls High School mm -hmm. the other day, um, shooting happened near Boys and Girls High School um, in in, Bed in Bed Bedford Stuyvesant, in Brooklyn. Um, the teenager was shot in the leg. He didn't real he didn't even realize he was shot. So. Yeah, you know, he was he was near shopping there. You know, if everybody familiar with uh, over there by Utica Avenue, Schenectady, boys um, and girls, high boys school. and girls. If you don't know where that is, on the outside Utica, the Utica, and uh, Fulton Street, the A train. Uh, you know, you know it, it, and that's right by a school. Uh -huh. I, you know, who who are the first line of people who came out for this incident with the shooting? Our safety officers. Our school safety agents. Absolutely. But now you want to get rid of school safety? I don't, I, no, no, no. I, 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 have, I have a pet peeve. No, the chancellor mentioned that he wants to increase it by a thousand safety agents. He did mention yesterday that that is something he would like to do. Now, we do not have enough people who are actually applying, but we do need more people to apply for safety jobs. See, Roger, you was going to go with some propaganda. No, 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 no. Thank no, you for no, straightening no, him out. No, no. He's getting ready to go with propaganda. No, no, no. I, I, you know, every so often. We're not talking go, about I, prior I, I, things. Wait. We're not. We have a new administration, so the past is the past and new beginning. No, no, no. Wait, wait. That's not what I was talking about. I, I, I keep um, 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 UIC it tweets and I get their tweets all the time. And they're talking about, oh, school safety, this school's talking about suspensions, right? And I get all these tweets. And I'm like, this is the reason why you can't get rid of school safety. You can't tell me that the school safety is pipeline to prison. School safety no, protect our children. Things. You're talking about past things and with the new mayor. No, no, not past things. I'm talking about current. This is current. They were on City Hall last week. Listen, listen, listen. With everything that's going on and people are realizing the importance of school safety, we do not have to revisit the past or... Um, what I'm saying, Joanne, is not the past, right? I'm telling you it's not the past. They were on City Hall. They were on City Hall last week with this type of ridiculous rhetoric, right? Because they're still looking to promote the dismissal. I'm glad that the chancellor came out and say that, but... You know, but they have current advocacy for it. They can advocate all they want. But the thing is, the reality is reality. We had a lot of students who actually have been bringing in um, all types of gadgets, guns, um, equipment to the school. Why? Because they're afraid. Why? Because, hey, they, they're getting paid. Why? Because, hey, something might be happening on their way to school. So we do not know the exact reason why. But the safety of our students, the safety of our educators, everyone in the community is the number one priority. And I think our new chancellor and mayor really is backing that up. So for all those haters, they can continue to speak. But if we're watching the climate of time, we actually need to do more protection. So moving right along, I would like to speak about um, our governor, who decides that she wants to extend the alcohol, taking the alcohol? Yeah, yeah, let's give a clap for that. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 yeah. Hold on. yeah. Can, can I hear what she said first, yo? I, I have. Um, no, I, wait, go back. You didn't finish. John interrupted you. What the governor wants for to extend 
um, taking your, you know, your drinks and going and, and walking around the street and continuing. Hey, from taking my libation. Yeah. But here's, here's the, um, you didn't say anything about drinking in the street because you can't drink it in the street. It's true to buy your, your alcohol to go, to go, yes. to go alcohol. Here's the, um, I don't know. I, I have. Yes. Mis- yes. Miss yes, conservative, uh, overly moral person. Go ahead. I'm listening. That has nothing to do with that. Um, I have mixed reservation about it because of how crime has been going on in our community because of our wonderful um, just change in the culture, how it is. I don't know how safe that is. And that has nothing to do with being extra conservative. It's just about the safety of, of everything. Now, another thing... Um, Wait, wait, don't don't move from the topic yet. No, 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 no. The liquor stores are against it because they feel they're going to lose money. Yeah, but businesses have been losing money for a long time, and the liquor store were making a hell of a lot of money during COVID. They made a hell of a lot. Of money. <laughs> they made a hell of a lot of money. Well, of what money. happened was, what happened was they saw the, they saw their profit <laughs> went up like 50, 60, 70, 80 percent, and they don't want to lose that. Right, that's what happened. But yo, the, the 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 restaurant suffered a lot. Okay. Right, and the restaurant. You know, forget all that. You know, I was pissed off about. What is that? Last time I took my sons, my wife and I took my children to to Broadway, right, to go see Tina Turner. Oh, the vaccine mandate. The stupid vaccine mandate that mm. for my five, my six year old, and my nine year old that they had to prove that they were vaccinated. What Let's kind of crap is that for a nine year old? So they couldn't get in. They couldn't. We couldn't get in. <laughs> That's why he's upset because they couldn't get it. I'm really pissed off about that. Oh, okay. nah, I'm saying twelve year old. I get it, but a okay. nine year old dog. Whoa. I'm not going to say anything. Whoa. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Don't get me wrong. My children are vaccinated. It sounds like those elected officials in California. Right. Do as I say, but not as I do. Right. My children. My children are vaccinated. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just simply saying I'm pissed off that. And a nine-year-old has to show a vaccine card. For what? So you didn't have your vaccine card? Oh, I did, but the kids didn't. So we ended oh. up mm-hmm. so we ended up, we ended up going to Chelsea so and get could some I, could, I, could I buy your tickets? <laughs> <laughs> they told me they told me we could come back with the tickets. Um, you know, uh, come back later on. Um, Jermaine Williams uh, picked a running mate. Maria um, um, Archilla was his choice for lieutenant governor and activist to come predate Confronted a U.S. senator in the. Hey, when are we going to get the governor for, on here? For I don't know. I've I've, I've been trying. It's not. It's I've, I've been trying. It didn't work out. So um, you call Miss Paul Shirley Paul? Yeah. yeah don't be dropping names on the damn air, man. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> I did call her. I called her. I actually sent her a message. You want to read my message? No, you should, did you talk to Mr. Cockfield? Al Cockfield? No, I didn't. Speak Reverend to Cockfield? No, that's your job. You, uh, you, you need, you, you need. know what? You guys are terrible. It's John. It's John. 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 John, John, John has um, uh, the, the mouth that just lets anything out when he, you know the mind thinks of it. The mouth lets it out. Uh, oh my God! Are you saying? It's saying you said wait, 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 wait. Did you I'm, not you say that? That? I'm a bad oh influence. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Did you understand that I'm the bad influence on John? John, you're my elder. You're my bad. <laughs> right? I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning from John. So, what do you think of the running mate, um, John? Um, Anna Maria uh, Achilles. She's the one that, if you remember, about three or four years ago, already actually maybe so long in the elevator, she started screaming. Um, start screaming at the uh, Republican. The, the, the Republican senator. About the nomination for uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Did you, by the way, did you see how Brett was at the? Um, we didn't even talk about the State of the Union address. We didn't even talk about that. Um, I said, you know, unity, unity, right? I, 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 I mean, I like Germani for running, but I don't think that by picking this person is going to give him a boost. Pick somebody from downstate. You're running statewide, so you pick somebody from upstate. Yeah, I understand it, but I don't. I don't think this person is going to give him a boost. He, he probably would have been better off picking like a, a, an elected official or a city council person. You know, somebody who's not terminated, who can't be out of office right now, than this person because I don't even know who that person is. Right to to do that. Um, speaking of the State of the Union 
Uh, your thoughts on it? What you what, what are your thoughts on? It? I, th- I think you know uh, it wasn't long. I, I think uh, one hour two minutes. I, everybody talks about you know Biden's health and his stamina. Remember, you know, but Biden, you know, Biden has been a he's been in government well over close to 50 years. 1974. 1974. Mm -hmm. And he has been he has been through all battles. So, you know, I, I will never ever question the man's commitment and dedication to the people of this country. I thought it was I thought it was well received. You know, I get tired of seeing the Republicans and the Democrats stand up. I mean, the whole point is, this is the division that exists in our community, and it's on full display right there in the chambers with the Democrat and Republicans. Why do you think people don't really don't like politics or like elected officials? Because they 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 tend to act like um, spoiled they, children, mm. spoiled children, instead of working together as grown individuals who are working for the collective of the people. That's what it is. So that's why I believe there needs to be term limits for elected officials. I I, do. I, I think five terms is good enough. Five terms, uh, uh, two terms for senators, and five terms for um, for Congress people. I think that's ten years. If you can't get anything done in ten years, there's no need for you to stay there. Um, but I do believe that you can be, you should be able to be reelected um, after sitting out. A, a, you need to sit out at least two terms before you can run again. I at least sit on one term. Yeah. I, well, same thing. Hey, look at Sharp James. Sharp James is coming, trying to come back. He's trying to run for uh, in in New Jersey a council seat at large. He's eighty five years old. <laughs> let, 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 let's look see. at Marion Barry. Marion Barry came back and whooped. Didn't he? He died recently. He died. Yes. Yeah, he died. Yeah. He can't run anymore. Unless he's in Chicago. So you know, <laughs> villagers. Um, you know what? Uh, you know, um, we have like one minute to touch on Ukraine, which we didn't do. Um, it is sad. It is sad what's going it on. Is sad. Yo, I, it is sad that the president of Russia, Putin, created a war in innocent, innocent men, women, and children, soldiers are dying because of his thirst for power mm-hmm. and control. for his thirst for power and control. Yep. Straight up. He is not a dictator. He is a despot. You know, he's a dictator. Look how long he's been in office and he can't leave. You know what? Uh, you know what else? I, I, I see these. I, I love WhatsApp. I see these things going on on WhatsApp about America, this and America, that. First of all, I'm telling you right now, America is the only country where you can criticize at that level and still be here. <laughs> and still be alive. <laughs> right? So all these things, like China put out this thing about what about these, America has been the occupier. Dude, right. at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, what Putin is doing in Ukraine is disgusting. Well, they got a hold of the nuclear... Um... Who got a hold of who? You said they got. Who's the they? Russians. Uh huh. They got a hold of the power plant, which is concerning to everyone. You know, it, it's I mean, really. Right. Remember, they're talking about his mental health. We got like thirty seconds, right? Well, it it is sad. It is yeah. sad. It's crazy. I mean, people, people. I mean, I, I'm just. But when I see WhatsApp, like people really don't. They don't know. And and then, you know, what's one thing I said to somebody? You talk about America, as if when you go abroad. And you're American, they're going to say, oh, America is the worst place in the world except for you. Well, I'll tell you this. I respect Ukraine president. He's gangster. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying I need American people to start thinking about what you're saying, right? Because at the end of the day, just like how Russia bombed (laughs) parts of Ukraine, they didn't care who was there. But they come bomb America, they don't care that you're there, right? Because you... Are Russian or oh, you hate the United States? God bless you, each and every one of you. Thank you for joining, watching, sharing, viewing the village right here on 92.1 GD radio on the FM dial. You could join us and please like, share on Facebook. I'm sorry, on YouTube at the Village Talk Show. Join us on Facebook at Roger F. Daly, John L. Sampson. Okay. 
Joanne Bryant, Andre Dolman, Sophia Willisie. God bless and remember, as the scripture says, it's important to persevere. Perseverance through Christ will get you through. God bless each and every one of you, and we'll see you next week. God bless. Any point, starting from today, day, day, success. Come one, come all to learn and grow. Welcome to the Village Talk Show. Come one, come all to learn and grow. Welcome to the Village Talk Show.